Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that's going to be a part of the Lights Out Championship go- show come up here at the end of the month, June the 25th, as he takes on Austin Bashley. Chris, man, as always, uh, appreciate it. It's been a long time. You know, when, when Ed was setting this one up, I was I started thinking about it. I was like, God, how long has it been since I, I spoke to Chris? And, well, yeah, it was yeah. Uh, after your last fight. Uh, yeah. Th- that was, uh, ago. yeah, before our world changed. Uh, you Before, that was like right <laughs> after too like i think after we talked it was like that week or somewhere around there where it just got crazy yeah i mean so like as you think about the last you know two plus years like in terms as your martial arts journey like how do you describe it a weird weird and it, it's it's been kind of a whirlwind you know especially like right at like it kind of was like martial arts went into this, like, especially where I'm from, where I'm at in Eugene, it was like, went into this like underground, like, you know, we were training where we could train for a little bit. We would sneak into the gym. We were sneaking into back doors, you know, trying to make sure we can get on the mats and still get training. And so, yeah, for a while it was, it was kind of crazy. Cool. But you know, now I'm glad it's over now. So I still say, I think the craziest story I heard from a fighter was where uh, they were training in their gym, in their uh, garage and they were using their car to wall walk. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good one. I think the, the craziest time we, 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 we needed a place to kind of have some open space and we couldn't find a big enough spot. It was like when all the gyms closed before we started sneaking into the gym. Cause we did at, at one point and we went out to my in-laws. They have like a big, like, pat, like a, almost like a farm. And they just had this like big concrete slab that was open. And we all just went out there, put our sparring stuff on with tennis shoes. And we were just out there sparring. We call it sparring on the farm. So we were out there for a little bit. We had to do that a couple of times. It was kind of crazy. Like, yeah, I think we all like had this like moment where we kind of realized that, that that maybe there's there's things we we took for for granted, you know, because we, mm-hmm. we just had the ability to go out and do. In, in yeah. terms of, of your martial arts journey, was there something that maybe you sat back and said, "Man, I, I now that this isn't there, I've kind of taken it for granted." Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think just like like with anything, it was just. Uh, the ability to just, you know, go and do something that you love to do. And not only that, you know, for a little bit, you know, I kind of always try and look at the positive sides of it. And for me, I got to really look at, you know, some of the aspects of training that maybe I didn't always, you know, put a hundred percent into like, you know, we always, everybody loves to go to the gym, get on the mats. They like to roll. They like to spar. You like to do all those things but all like the little intricate things, like as far as recovery and as far as like outside of the gym, you know, as athletes, sometimes we kind of forget about those things. So I think for me, I took away a lot of that, like being able to really like hone in on certain things, like from nutrition to, you know, recovery to, you know, yoga, like just different things that I couldn't do. Like I didn't have time to do, I guess, cause I was at the gym all the time. So th- those kind of things were like kind of nice to take away from that kind of experience obviously not getting fights can be frustrating is that is that a a, another way you kind of describe this journey for you yeah it was and i would say more like the second half of that you know the the second year of kind of having a layoff was more frustrating because the you know right after my fight i had a i had a knee injury that i was you know healing up and then we were kind of on the shelf for uh the 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 tough uh series the ultimate fighter so we had almost like two whole training camps with that because we had a training camp and they were like trying to release the date ago then they shut it down because of covid and then we had they picked it back up a few months later and so we were training for that a lot so I mean, for me, I was getting ready for that for nine to 10 months out of, out of that whole time. Um, and then it ended up not working out the day before, like they were flying people out. They were like, Hey, you're an alternate, you know, if somebody gets hurt or injured, you're on the list kind of deal. And so that ended up happening. But so for me, for that first year, it wasn't too frustrating. I was like really excited training really hard, getting all the things that I need to do. Uh, but then after that, it was kind of a, it kind of started to get frustrating, especially that was, I say, I think two fights, two, three fights fell through. And I was just like, Jace, not now I'm like, I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this one. I still like, I mean, it's June 25th. I still have my fingers crossed. I still need to get in once the door locks, then I'll be like, okay, here we go. Let's we can, we can have some fun now. Yeah. 
you know, you're taking on an undefeated guy. He's coming off winning a championship in Shamrock mm-hmm. FC. Now he's back yeah. uh, fighting kind of in his home region there up in the Michigan area. Um, I, I, as you look at Austin as his abilities, is, is there mm-hmm. something that sticks out to you above all else? You know, um, I would say, well, one, he's undefeated. So you look at undefeated guys. I've been there. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, he hasn't tasted a defeat. He is kind of he's kind of on a tear uh, with his record. He is young. He's athletic. He's strong. He's powerful. He's got a lot of skills. Um, you know, I think a couple of things that we've seen, um, we want to blast some holes through. But at the end of the day, you know, I think he looks – to me um, and and to like our team, just a good all around fighter. Yeah. We've seen him really kind of dominate on the wrestling aspect of, of some of his opponents, you know, as far as his top pressure, it looks really, really good. And, you know, so, you know, we'll, we'll go in there and kind of see what he has to offer. You know, I, I oppose a lot of different threats in a lot of different places. Um, so I always kind of look at myself as being able to kind of deal with whatever situation is gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna put some pressure on so do you feel like because of the fact of you know last time that he can watch a fight of yours was back in 2020 that uh-huh. the opening of this fight could be a little bit longer of a of a, a feel out process than maybe normally it would be you know um it, i think it could be you know it's it's hard yeah cause like, like there's not a ton like there's some footage on me there's not a ton out there um there's some really old stuff you know as an amateur um so yeah i think it could be a little bit longer feel out process but at the end of the day you never really know you know i think that's why i like fighting it's just you know if i wanted something what i knew was going to happen guaranteed i'd go and like you know do be an accountant or something and you know know what i'm going to get into every single day and so for me like walking into that cage and not really knowing is he going to come out hot and heavy and just you know want to throw or is he going to want to wrestle don't really know like that's why i like doing what i do so yeah i mean i heard this analogy a couple weeks ago from a fighter and when they said it to me i was like oh wow that's that's a perfect analogy of Mm -hmm. this game is the puzzle solving business there's a thousand pieces you just got to put all thousand together and you you don't know how long how how long it's going to take you know it may take you 14 minutes and 30 seconds or it might take Uh you 30 seconds yep yep and i and i think that's a great analogy because i always use that as like it, it is a puzzle and for me, especially that when I'm doing rounds, you know, especially when we're getting, trying to get, you know, we're getting the cardio where it needs to be. We're using a lot of fresh guys, you know, you're getting shark tanked a lot. That's one of my favorite things about that is you have to solve the puzzle piece every single round with different training partners, different people. And I, I, I love getting people in and, and doing that just even on a training basis. And so I, I feel like that's, you know, honestly, for me, one of my biggest strengths is that ability to adjust make adjustments on the fly make adjustments between rounds and really, you know, capitalize on what I need to do inside the ring. You know, Ed was mentioning about, uh, you know, life outside fighting, obviously, you know, with, with your family and uh, mm-hmm. say so you mm-hmm. love to cook and play games with, with the family. So yeah, like yeah. if we're having like a family game night, you're cooking uh-huh. the dinner. What, what's, what's, what's going on on the plate? Oh man. Well, so I love cooking. You know, I like my dad, for example, is just like this, just crazy awesome cook and he's been you know i've always watched him cook since i was little but i didn't really get into cooking a ton until actually i started really like professionally fighting because i mean honestly i was like man i i i i need good food and i I don't want to enjoy also what i'm eating and not i mean i started off my career eating like you know the blandest chicken breasts ever and (laughs) that's not a life to live you know for a long time so cooking kind of developed over the last six, seven years for me. And, uh, it doubt that answer would depend on whether I'm in training camp or out of training camp. But at, at the end of the day, they're always like, it's always going to be good ingredients. I think that's the biggest thing I took away, um, from, you know, learning about nutrition and just, I'm always trying to put just good food in my body. So, you know, never crap, um, always good, like organic and whole food stuff. You know, that's always what I'm trying to do. But I think one of like, one of my signatures, which would be like, everybody wants me to cook it when they come over and hang out and stuff like that is a, is a, it's a, it's a shrimp. It's a, it's a barbecued shrimp and it's, it's a kind of a family secret. Uh, we could either grill it, griddle it, um, but that's mostly what we're doing and it's, it's pretty fire. 
So when we're talking about we're playing game night with with the family, is is the competitive juices as strong as it is on fight night? No, I try not to. I've I've purposed my life. I'm super. Yeah, you're right. I am super competitive. I have to try not to be competitive in other games and other things. But I've always been. I'm just really competitive. You know, if you put like some lawn games out there, I will want to win every single time. But card games and board games are the things that I do not care if I win or lose. Okay, I will. I will get smoked. Like you know, I you ever played speed? like the card yeah, yeah. game right my wife beats me every single time like i can never win i'm just never i've never won once and hearts is also another one that i just i just can't seem to win and but i keep playing it and i just i have fun doing it and i think that's that's a good like balance of not being competitive in something and that's my thing i'm a spades guy okay okay yeah you know. i don't play a lot of spades the, the only thing that ever get me frustrated if you're, you know, you're playing with a partner and they bid wrong, and you're just like, what the hell are you doing over there? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Because, you know, you, you get around the fellas, you know, it gets it, it yep. get a little competitive, you know, you know some, yeah. some drinks in hand and it gets a little yeah, competitive exactly. there. Uh, like a, like poker or something like that. I don't really, I don't really gamble. I suck at gambling. So that's one other thing. Like I lose every single time. So that's, it, it keeps you balanced. I got to lose at something and I'll take, I'll take that out of their stuff versus fighting. So and of course uh, you got this fight cup here, June 25th lights out championship. Number eight as always, man. I appreciate time. Of course, uh, let me know that you can follow you on social media. Anybody else want to mention, man? Heck yeah. Uh, no, I appreciate you having me on. I really do. Uh, I love doing this. I love uh, performing for my, my fans. You guys can follow me, uh, Christopher uh, San Jose official of my Instagram. And that's my Facebook page. So yeah, I'm really excited for this June 25th matchup.